What up, people? Please give this video a like if you like the video. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking on the icon in the bottom right-hand corner of this video. And then make sure that you turn your push notifications on so you can receive updates every time we post a video here on the Vaniverse Gaming channel. Okay, people, welcome to episode four of my journey guide for Conan Exiles. In today's episode, we are going to cover the chapter five of the journey. And so you will see that I've already unlocked two of these. One is Destroy the Abyssal Remnant. I actually did an entire video on the Dregs Dungeon. And at the end of the Dregs Dungeon, you have to fight the Abyssal Remnant. So just check that video out. It's going to be in another playlist called uh, Conan Exile Dungeon Guides. If it's not there yet, it'll be there tomorrow or in another day. I also already unlocked the Black Hand Camp. I was exploring a little bit on the test server. It just so happens I came over to this uh, captain's quarters here at Buccaneer Bay and all the like pirate type guys are black hand and so I unlocked that. Now right here is also the pirate ship. So black hand you're probably going to find those types of unlocks up in this northern area of the, um, of the desert and then also you will find it over here near this bay. And I believe there's some other locations around here where you can unlock the Black Hand camp. But usually Black Hand are a little bit higher level, um, like tier 2 uh, level area. But definitely at the Black Galleon right here, and around the Black Galleon, and then over here. Alright, so what do we still have left in Chapter 5? So in Chapter 5 we have Craft an Exceptional, exceptional or Flawless Item, Upgrade a Building Piece, Obtain the Head of a, of a Boss Creature, Ride an Elevator, Decorate yourself with more paint, fire treb, combine orb effects, and climb the Tower of Bats. So let's first talk about what you need and what level you need to be. Um, so first things first, you do need to be at least level 25 to achieve all this. So you need to be level 25. And then on top of that, here are the things you have to unlock. You have to have elevators unlocked. Now technically, if you're on an, a server with other players and you see any elevator, as long as you ride an elevator, anybody can ride one, um, you will actually get the unlock for ride an elevator. We need Journeyman Mason to be able to craft a stone brick foundation because that's what we're going to do to earn the upgrade. And this requires level 20. We will need the engineering open up so we can build a trebuchet so that we can actually fire one in order to unlock that one. And then the boss head, the right here. This one, I'm going to show you the boss that I killed and got it, who's not too hard. Um, there's some other bosses that you can probably get it from, but I'll show you the one that I was able to get one right off of the bat. And then decorate yourself with more paint. This actually requires that you have this nifty little thing unlocked which looks like a paintbrush where is it so first you need papyrus and in order to do that you need furniture maker then you need to unlock the papyrus and then you should be able to unlock this decorative war paint and you can see this unlocks these war paints right here so we'll unlock that and the last thing that i believe we need is so combine orb effects this is similar to when we threw an orb. If you kill NPCs, you can get uh, some orbs from there, or you can craft orbs in your Fireball Cauldron. The only way you can craft them in your Fireball Cauldron, though, is if you knock out a Alchemist and put them on a wheel and break them, and then put them on the Fireball Cauldron. So let's just show you that here. I'm actually going to spawn in an Alchemist. We'll call him a Medicine Man. Uh, let's just actually Alchemist. And we'll just pick a level one. Let's just pick him and spawn him as a Sumerian. Whoops. So I accidentally spawn one who wants to fight me because I'm silly. So I am playing on the test server now. Uh, my other videos were actually not recorded on the test server, but I am on the test server for this. Here's our alchemist. We will go ahead and actually open this up. We'll throw him on there and now you'll have access to the different orbs here. So you can see at a level one alchemist, this requires five volatile orbs and a water orb. 
Folds a glands in a water orb to make that one. This requires puffball mushrooms, and this requires tar. So the easiest com combination to do is war uh, tar and water. So you throw tar down, then you throw a water orb on top of it, and then you will actually get the unlock for that. And then the last one is climb the Tower of Bats. So we will actually show you where the Tower of Bats is located, and then we will show you what you need to do to unlock that one as well. So let's get started with some of the easy ones. Um, so the first one is, is going to be upgrade a building piece. So as soon as you go into your feet and get this stone mason, this journeyman mason, you should have the ability to make a stone foundation. And so this requires bricks, iron reinforcements, and shape wood. So at this point, you would need a carpenter bench. This is where you're going to make your shaped wood. You would need your furnace to make your iron bricks. And then you would also need your blacksmith bench to make your iron reinforcements. So once you do that, and you actually can craft one, so I'll just do one myself here. So stone brick. Right there. So to achieve this, you just basically go over to one of your building pieces. You can see it's kind of highlighted underneath. Click OK. And now I just replaced a tier one with a tier two. And I unlocked the journey to upgrade a building piece. Craft an exceptional or flawless item. So to craft an exceptional or flawless item, all you have to do is you have to put a um, any any level one to four whatever um, of a thrall of a specific blacksmith whatever. So let's just let's just do this. So let's just put in here um, blacksmith. And so whoops. Okay. So let's say I ran out and I found myself a blacksmith one. Dang it, I forgot to do it again. Hold on one second. Ahoy there. Yeah, uh, hold on. Silly. We gotta make sure we spawn him as a converted fall. Okay, this guy is stepping on me. Hold on. Okay. Alright. So, now we actually have the level 1 blacksmith in our inventory. We can click on the blacksmith bench. We can throw him in here. And as soon as you throw him in here, you'll notice that up here you have this exceptional iron warhammer. So now we would be able to craft an exceptional iron warhammer as long as we have all the stuff. So we need some sticks. Uh, I don't even know where my sticks are. Do I even have any sticks? Uh, yeah. So we'll throw this in here. And then we should be able to craft this. We need iron warhammer unlocked. Let's go to feats and find our iron warhammer. We need to unlock this. And then we should be able to unlock the iron warhammer. All right. So now that we have the iron warhammer unlocked, if we go back to our blacksmith bench, you will see this is now able to be crafted. And we will craft this. And then we will get the journey for uh, craft an exceptional or flawless item. So basically, all you really need is to go knock out an NPC, put them on your wheel, break them into a thrall. And it should work for any of the benches. Um, that you can craft an item on obviously so the armor or the blacksmith that kind of stuff so right there you've gained a level and I just got the achievement for crafting a exceptional or flawless uh, item so we'll save this one for a little bit ride an elevator will save all right so the next one we're gonna do is the combine orb effects so you'll notice in here I already have a water orb and then if I have an alchemist I can make a orb here just by putting in a water orb and five tar. Now, if you didn't have an, an alchemist, then you would obviously just find a camp like this and kill a bunch of uh, NPCs until you probably will get a tar and a water orb, or you'll get a poison in a water orb. So let me show you how this works. To do the combined orb effect, we're just gonna put an orb. And let's do grease, okay? So, you would throw a grease orb, and then you would throw a water orb, and now the combined orb effect works because what happens is water will remove the grease. So we combined two, and we were able to get that achievement by combining that. Now if you had gas, you could also throw water on gas, you could throw demon fire on gas, you could throw demon fire on oil, on tar. Um, so there's a lot of different combinations, but water and tar is probably the easiest ones to make and to achieve that. All right, so 
now we need climb the tower of bats, fire treb, decorate ourselves, and war paint. So let's do the war paint one. Um, once you unlock this bad boy right here, once you unlock the brush, you now have the different war paints. You find them in your cauldron, and right here you need a brush. So this is actually a pain in the butt because the only way to make a brush is to have fur. And fur comes from the frozen north, which is a real pain in the back end to get. So in order to do this, you actually have to kill some animals up here and get some fur. There's nothing that I know of that drops fur anywhere else. Now, if someone can correct me on that, please do. Otherwise, you'd have to go up to the frozen north and kill something for fur. Um, so in that case, I'm not going to go and kill something for fur. I'm just going to spawn fur so that we can show you how this works. So... We need a brush, uh, inking brush. All right, so now you will see that once you have your inking brush, then the other piece you need is a piece of papyrus, which is uh, can be made, I believe, in your inventory. No, it's actually made on the furniture bench. So we have to craft a artisan work table. So we need some wood for that. I think I have some wood here. If not, I'll just spawn it in. Yep. And we'll craft an artisan table. And once we put the artisan table down, that should give us the ability to make the papyrus in order to do our warping. All right, put this bad boy down right here. And right here is the piece of paper. You just need some fiber, throw that in there, craft. And then the last thing we're going to need is whichever war paint we're going to do. So in order to unlock the achievement, the easiest war paint to do is actually going to be the black hand because all you need is some coal. So obviously coal is super easy to find. It's just a big black rock. You hit it and you get it. So I'm just going to spawn in some coal, make it easy. And now come over here, throw in my papyrus, throw in my brush, throw in my coal. And shebango. Well, don't forget to put in your fuel and don't forget to turn it on. Do, 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 do. And voila. Put it on your inventory. Um, I'm sorry. Put it into your inventory and then you should be able to just right click it. As soon as you right click it, you get the journey, decorate yourself with war paint. And if you look at yourself, depending on which one you do, you have a little picture on your body. Now, this isn't the war paint that gives you any stats. That comes later on in the game. Um, but if I were to take this off and do this, you can see I have the same thing that appears on, like, the black hands um, flags. Now I have it on my body. So this is just for decoration. There's no stat buffs that come from this. The stat buff war paint comes later on down the road. So that took care of that. Now let's do the fire a trebuchet and ride an elevator. And then we'll go from there. I will probably make a whole separate video on elevators. I know a lot of people ask me in my other video, how did you, how did I get some of those elevators to go across? So I might do a whole separate little mini video on elevators and just how they work. So stay tuned for that. And so let's do the trebuchet. So the first thing you need in order to make a trebuchet is you need to be at least level 25 and you need to unlock the trebuchet and you need to have apprentice mason and carpenter. So on your carpenter bench, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make the foundation, and then the second thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make the base. So again, these require brick and shaped wood. This requires iron reinforcements and wood. And so we're just going to go ahead and make it to save time in this video. So siege, it's not called catapult, it's not called trebuchet, it's called siege foundation. All right? Then the next thing we're going to do is once you craft the seize foundation, you're going to need your base. So, treb base. All right. So these are the two things that you are going to need to have on your body. Everything else is going to require that you build it out in the field. So a couple tips when you're doing the trebuchet. Um, I did a video on how the trebuchet works and how to do damage with it and how to raid with it, but I didn't really show you how to build it and whatnot. Um, so a couple tips on this is... Always bring the required materials to repair it, which is going to be iron reinforcements, I believe, in wood, 
we'll, we'll get a repair hammer out and just show you once we use it because basically you can continue to repair it, but it only gets about, I think, seven, maybe seven. I think it gets like seven or eight shots of it before it actually just falls apart, and then you got to rebuild it again, and it's a real pain in the ass. So make sure to bring a repair hammer with you. And I'm so sick of moving around like super dirt slow. I'm going to reset this and put it all in encumbrance because this is driving me insane. Okay. All right, sweet. All right, so now to get the achievement, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put down our base. So just be careful when you put the base. You can put it down the ground like this or you can hold shift, raise it up a little bit. And then the next thing you need to do is put the... The base of the treb should fit right on top, and if it doesn't, you have problems. So let's see here, what's going on? All right, let's try again. Just not overlapping with another train, come on. So sometimes this can be fickle. I've had this issue many times in the past. Uh, alrighty, maybe I put, I think I might've put it too high, to be honest with you. Because it should have snapped in by now. Let's try again. Alright. Admin panel. Siege. Click. Alright. So this one we're not going to put as high. We're only going to put it like a little high. So let's put it like right there. There we go. So I think I just put it too high. So once you get it down you should be able to put the base on. And this is the start of your trip. Now, you actually have to build the arm and everything from here. So the next thing you need to build is the frame, which requires iron reinforcements and wood. So just for sake of doing it, I'm just going to make a frame. All right. And then what you do is you basically... It might not let me do it, to be quite honest. You might actually have to craft it in here. Let's see. Yep. Yep, it's going to make me craft it in here, so I can't cheat this system. So what do we need? We need wood, and we need iron reinforcements. So admin panel, wood, and iron reinforcements. If you spell iron right, it'll actually populate for you. Okay, so we'll put in our wood and our iron reinforcements and craft. So I couldn't spawn it in because what happens is, is when you craft it inside of the treb, it just automatically appears. So after it's done crafting, you'll see that it'll just show up with an with the uh, frame. Let's see if I can actually change the crafting speed so that this might go a little bit faster. Crafting, crafting. Fuel burn timer, crafting time multiplier. All right, let's cut it down. Back. Okay. So that should speed it up. Or not. All right. So we'll just wait. And then after we... So when you're when you're going out to raid somebody, you build the siege foundation and you build the base at your... At your... Um, at your base... And then you put it where you're going to raid. But then you got to make sure that you carry enough wood and an iron, enough iron reinforcements to then build the rest of it out in the open. And then you also need stone and everything. So right here, the frame is done. You can see it. So now if we click on it again, the next thing it's going to say is add the arm. So we just need a little twine. So we'll add a little twine. All right, throw the twine in. And craft this. So you can see that in order to build one of these, it takes a lot of resources, but it's super cheap. So right there, it automatic it put the arm on right away. So now, the only thing we have left is to actually build the boulders and the counterweights. So the boulders just require stone and twine. So these I can spawn. I'm not going to go out and farm stone and twine. I can just put in siege. Whoops. Uh, admin panel and siege and boulders let's pick a couple all right so now you put the boulders in here 
but this is not you're not done yet so you actually have to say what payload you're currently using so you actually gotta drive one and drop it in here because you could have boulders or you can have demon fire barrage which is made at a different level but I'll show you what this looks like uh, right here so that's why you could fill this up with both of these and right now it's shooting these but if I want to shoot these I just dump them in so you kinda change what it is now the other thing that's super important is the distance so your counterweight cho changes the distance you need at least something in here to fire it off so this is where stone comes into play and then you just drop your stone in All right, and you can watch as the load ratio will go up the higher the load ratio the further this thing is going to fire and it has some pretty sick range on it All right, so once you have it loaded and ready to go you just click fire there it goes bye bye and we just got the journey step for firing a trebuchet and then to reset it you just come back here click on this reloads it now say I want to switch ammo I just quickly drop this in and then say okay I want to aim at that over there then I just move the trebuchet do, 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 do. and I don't want it to go as far so I take out some counterweights and now we go and watch. watch it. Oh wow. Hey yo. Didn't mean to upset you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can see now on the test server that they actually show you the different effects that you have on each of the creatures. So you can see with a two hander, you actually can cripple and you can sunder depending on how many of your heavy attacks you do. Alright. So we just earned the journey. That was a long-winded way of showing you how a treb works, but there you go. We just got the fire treb. So the last two are ride an elevator and obtain the head of a boss creature. So let's do elevators quick. So elevators are kind of difficult. Um, once you know how they work, they're not so bad. So what are, elevators are made in the carpenter bench. Right here is your horizontal, and right here is your vertical. And it takes some shaped wood and some iron bars in order to make these and some twine. So I'm just going to do one of each. So admin panel and elevator, gear, building. All right, one vertical, one horizontal. Right. So we'll drop this off our inventory and what is it? All right. So now to ride an elevator, so let's build an elevator from up top here down. So the, the key to know about an elevator is whatever it hits, it's going to stop at. So if you're building on the side of a mountain, you want to make sure that you have enough foundations and or um, ceiling pieces out so that it's not hitting the ground. So like if I was to put this down right here, if I was just to like, let's, so let's put a two here. Okay, so let's put this here. All right, now I'm going to put this down. If I were to put this down, you can see it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. The reason why it doesn't go all the way to the bottom is because it sees, okay, it's going to hit the wall right here. So it stops at that point. So you can see when I pick it up, when I go to put it down, you'll notice that the bottom of the elevator is currently right below the actual elevator. But when I snap it into place, then it shows up down below. So if you want to make sure that it hits the bottom, the ground ground the easiest way to do it is just to make sure that you're super far out so I can't put another um, foundation but I can put a ceiling piece and once I add this ceiling piece all right, it will then allow me to go all the way down to the bottom so you don't need to put a foundation at the bottom if you don't want to okay so now you'll see uh, I guess I'm still not fully out there. So let's just add one more ceiling piece. And it should get it. Ceiling piece, admin panel. And then it should get me flat. So if you're on any kind of, of like surface that's not completely flat, then it's not going to set flat on the ground. So right there. Now it's set flat on the ground. So now that we have an elevator, in order to get the achievement, we just click on it, ride it, and now we got the achievement. All right. So now let's talk about the vertical elevator and how that whole thing works. 
So I'm still not completely flat because of the ground there, but you kind of get the gist of it. All right, so now let's build a vertical elevator. So I want to build a vertical elevator. I'm sorry, we just built a vertical elevator. Let's build a horizontal one. So let's try and get this to line up. So this is a hard, this is the hard part. You don't know how high you got to go. So you got to put them on, climb up, and then kind of eyeball it. Oh boy. Uh, let me get some stamina. Ugh. Come on, stamina. All right. I can't climb because I'm super heavy. Alrighty, almost to the top. Almost to the top. Come on, don't run out of stamina. You're gonna make me mad. Gosh darn. Alright, so admin panel. And let us just do a little cheat mode here. Ghost, we'll just fly. Haha. -ha. Right. So you can kind of see, I'll take ghost mode off. Alright, so you can kind of see it looks pretty lined up, right? So how we know is we should be able to click this in. And voila. So now we're nice and lined up. We're right across. Everything is good. And that's how it works. So if you want to judge the distance on how far this goes, you just basically put it, line it up, put it where you want it to go. And then if it's not connecting, it's too far, you add a ceiling piece. And then you add another ceiling piece. And so that is pretty much how you do it. Uh, I don't want to get too far into the elevators. I just want to kind of show it to you real quick and also complete the journey step. All right, so the last things that we need to do is obtain the head of a boss creature and climb the Tower of Bats. So we're going to find the Tower of Bats. The Tower of Bats is right about here. Let's see. Let me see if I remember correctly. It was right here. Here. Let me see. Let me pour it around and then I'll let you know because I'm pretty sure I remember, but sometimes looking at this map from up here makes it a lot harder than it should be. So let's start here and see where we go. We get it on the first try. Admin panel. Make it daylight. All right. So where are we and where do we need to be? Oh, nope. It's over there. That's the one. So let's. Yep. This is it right here. So let's see if we can get a little bit closer and then kind of show you how this works. Yes, so this is the Tower of Bats to get up to the top here. Um, basically, it's not too hard. You can just climb your way up. I believe it's easier to get there from the backside, but either way, not super, super difficult. We're gonna, uh, we're just gonna ghost to make things easy so I can kind of show it to you. So right here is where we need to go. We need to get up on top of there. So for the most part, there's a lot of areas to climb around here. Not too difficult to get up on top. So you can see there's just tons of little crevices and stopping points. And that's basically the goal. Is you basically just climb, 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 and then you get up to here. Alright, so I'm gonna unghost. Alright. So once you get up to here, all you have to do is run up to the top of these stairs. I'll show you again on the map. Right here it is. And I just got the journal achievement because I have now climbed to the Tower of Bats. Now, the boss head achievement. We want to make sure that we have a hatchet on us. And there is an, an albino bat demon up here at the top. If you kill him, you should be able to get a boss head off of him. He's not super, super hard, 
but he's not easy either. So you can see his health is fairly down. Um, again, because he, I would use daggers to be quite honest. They changed the dagger combat a little bit. All right, I'm getting stuck here. So you can see his health. He's got some decent hit points. He's probably got the same amount of hit points as the dregs. So if you have some buddies, you can kill him. But to try and solo him is probably not a wise decision at a low level. So let's just get our achievement here and then let's call it a day because I'm not going to be able to kill him at level 25 with the gear I have. So probably not the best idea to, to try and do the boss head achievement on him. You can see he's still bleeding, but it would take me a little bit to eat through all of his health. So the place where I ended up getting the achievement for a boss head creature is right in this place right here and it's on this island right here so let me just port to right here there is a Kappa King so basically it's a big turtle guy he doesn't have that much health if you kill him he pretty much give me a head every time I've ever killed him so let's show you that and also you have this water here so that if it's getting ugly you can always uh, break aggro so let's find him so right there he is. He looks different than the others. You see him right here with the horns. That's a normal looking one. This is him here. And let's have at it. Oh boy. Oh boy. So you should probably kill these guys first. One second. Eh, so maybe I wasn't wrong. Uh, perhaps he does have similar health to the Bat Demon. Uh, I must have killed him when I was higher level. But same principle. Let's cut through these guys. Yeah. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you definitely want to kill all these little guys first. That is for sure. I don't remember having to kill through all these. Oh, you know what the problem is? I'm not spec That's what the problem is. I changed my spec. You definitely want to have 20 strength, at least, when you're doing this. That's why. I was wondering why I was not doing any damage. Alright, now let's try it. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, okay. So that was the problem with the bad demon. I was wondering why I wasn't doing that much damage. It's because I was not specced for uh, strength. But now you can see his health is going down much quicker now that I've specced for strength. You can use a two-hander if you want, but I like to dot first. And now that they added in, like right now he's sundered, he's crippled, and he's bleeding. So I kind of like that they show you that now, because then you know when to reapply the dots. I wish it had a number beside the stacks, though, because it doesn't tell me how many stacks of bleed I... Oh, yeah, it does. It's just really freaking small. It does tell you. It's just really small. They need to, they need to fix that. Right. Yeah, so once I put into strength, this guy's going down a lot quicker. Now, granted, I'm in god mode, so I'm not trying to dodge his attacks or anything, um, but you should be able to do that pretty easily. And then if you're like, oh god, I'm going to die, then what you do is you just kind of run into the water. If you're not over encumbered like me because I moved encumbrance. If you run into the water like this, he'll break aggro and then you can come back. So once he's dead, you should be able to hit him with a hatchet. I'm going to drop all this stuff. Good lord. Alright, just for sake of time, I'm going to respec again and put it back into encumbrance so that... Alright. So now, right there. Shellback King Head on the first swing. So as I said, this guy has given me a head every time. He's really not that bad to kill. You can probably kill him with iron weapons. Just make sure that you have 20 points into strength. Now, there also is another boss mob, and it's up here. It's called an Elk King. He's also pretty darn easy to kill. And I usually f will teleport up, and we'll show you where he is. 
he also drops ahead fairly often. So the Elk King is actually all over the place, um, and he's probably, I would say, he's much easier to kill than the Kappa King that I just killed just now. I believe he sits, there's one right around here. I'll wait for it to spawn in, but I'm pretty sure there's one usually right here. So just for giggles, we're going to put 20 points into here. All right, and let's find him. Now, the Elks and the Elk Kings, they look different. The Elks just have normal antlers. The Elk Kings have, like, really thick antlers. And so that's how you tell them apart. Uh, once I find him. Okay, so this is just a regular. This is just a regular Elk. And you can tell by how much damage he takes. And... Oh, God. Okay. Now, the Elk King is here. Now this is an Elk King, right here. I didn't even have to go out here. You can see his horns are much thicker. And this guy also should give you the boss. You can see his health is also a lot higher, but nowhere near the health of the Kappa King. And if you kill him and you get his head, you will also get the same achievement and it's a lot easier. And by the time you're 25 or 30, you really should be making a base closer to the Frozen North, if not already in the Frozen North. Kind of change the uh, the daggers a little bit. This like attack is a little bit strange. Do this little hop thing now. All right, so he's dead. Hit him with this. Right there, elk king head. So now that I got the elk king head, that also will be considered a boss creature, and it will also give me the same achievement. So there you go. That is all of them for chapter five. Again, check out my video on the dregs, which will show you how to unlock the achievement for destroy the abyssal remnant. And then we covered everything else in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please let me know in the comments if there's anything that you want me to do better when I record these videos. Sometimes I tend to get off onto a tangent. So I appreciate all watching. This is Vaniverse and the Vaniverse Gaming Channel. Cheers and peace out.